Big Boar Barbecue presents Seven Rivers Racing on KQEG TV with Dan the Voice Diker, Billy Doc Niles, and Paul the Statman Riker. Brought to you by Big Boar Barbecue, Highway 16 West Salem, in La Crosse on 3rd Street downtown and George and Gillette Street. Big Boar Barbecue, now that's a mouthful. By Cary Heating and Air Conditioning, your residential specialist, serving the La Crosse area since 1929. Cary Heating and Air Conditioning. And by the D&D Diner. Good food, fine wine. On Theater Road in Sparta, next to the BP Truck Stop. Hey, race fans, welcome in. Seven Rose Racing, KQEG TV, along with Paul Riker and Billy Doc Niles. And the theme of today's program is rain. No, I'm sick of rain. Uh, let's let's right. let's talk about something else. Yes. Rain That's sucks. What we have to talk about the only highlights we have today are from the Toma Sparta Speedway. It's been like four weeks since we've actually had highlights from lacrosse. It's well, at least three weeks. I mean, we did get some racing in what three weeks ago, but wow, it's just it's incredible. I mean, you you think the forecast is going to be nice, and then all of a sudden. Boom, it gets black and it showers on our parade. I'll talk about the Toma Sparta Speedway. It was a night of bonus cash, broken streaks, and tears. Let's get you right to the last two of the big race there. Matt Moore, a local business owner, put some extra money in for the six shooters. They brought three from Madison, five from Winona. Had a huge car class, pretty sure the last two of this one right here. And Matt Moore said if he won, he was going to give the second place driver the cash. Matt Marsh started this feature. You see how big this was from the back. Had the lead in five laps. He wins. Former big eight late model driver Brady Little takes home the cash. What is Brady Little doing in a six shooter? Yeah. Had a whole lot of fun. He was in this cop car. It was the number. It was the number five fifty. One of his buddies he brought up was the number .08, which I thought that was off the entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> and then a double nickel. It's you know it's kind of cool. That's uh, you know, first of all it was really cool that Matt Moore put the money up. Second of all I thought it was even cooler that you know if he said he'd win. You know, he'd pay a second place off, so congratulations, Brady Little. But, wow, I mean, it's, can anybody beat Matt Moore? I mean, five laps and he's in the front. That was an incredible run. Well, it's out there on Facebook now that he won, and there's a lot of, hmm, I think I need to come out and stop him. And I'm not going to throw the names out there. You've probably seen them on Facebook so far. There's quite a few very familiar names that may be... Uh, Strapping into a six-shooter at Toma. How about our boy Cheeto went in a heat race the other night? Yeah, Cheeto was really excited for that. He and Alex Leach, Alex Leach was leading that feature for the first five laps, and he's going to be coming back. And uh, Jonathan Burback in the fabulous 13, he will be back. I told Cheeto it was the paint well. job. <laughs> to the hobby stocks we go. Jeff LaFave Jr. is undefeated this year. Let's roll the last two laps of this one here. Early race leader, prior Lake Minnesota's Mike Borcher drove his machine off the track and turns three and four. Uh, LeFave was only about a, a car lane and a half length behind. Capitalized, went out to win the 15 lap feature. It was nice to see prior Lake Minnesota's Mike Borcher come down for the big oh, money. We've seen Borcher come down, uh, 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 Devin Schmidt earlier in the year, and he won, he won the feature. Uh, the competition is pretty good if we could get them all together in one night instead of spacing them out. This would be a, this would be a one heck of a show. Midwest Dash Series has belonged to West Salem, Wisconsin's Patrick Tiki. Paul knows all about the number 56 car. Oh, yes. Uh, this thing has been awfully fast at the Tomo Sport of Speedway. It's really the last two laps of this one here. Beginning of the program, I said it was a night of uh, big money and tears and broken streaks. Patrick Tiki's streak of going to win there. Uh, undefeated this year. Uh, came to the hands of why will Wisconsin's Wayne Malsby was just that much faster throughout the entire feature. And uh, Patrick Tiggy just said, my car just wasn't up to snuff. Yeah, uh, you've seen him in action, and he's really looked good, but uh, ran some for competition this week. Well, Patrick Tiki his first loss of the year, but a nice run by Wayne Malsby. He kept about a, a lap car in between, or length of a car in between his and, and Tiki's machine throughout that feature. A couple of sportsmen came out, uh, several sportsmen came out and did a nice job. Billy Doc Niles, if one portrait comes out, well, then what, what do we see at the lacrosse speedway? The other one comes out, but uh, you know, it's usually a late model and a sportsman. Uh, but just still, it's it's great that they show up at Toma. That you know, make that Greg Oliver doing a great job with this track. The numbers are starting to get better, and it's it's only going to be better by the end of the season. Well, 15 lap feature, and it came down to Malin Born Trager of Elroy, Wisconsin, and uh, it was Greg Borchard out of Prior Lake, Minnesota. Those guys ran side by side pretty much for the entire 15 lap feature, kept everybody else at bay behind him. Uh, but in the end, by about a half a car length, it was uh, Borchard to win, and that was his first ever win. At 
Toma Sporta Speedway. What is up with all these Minnesota guys taking the money back home at Toma? Come on, guys. I know. It was something else. <laughs> Talking about taking it home. Darren Sato, week number one, modified, broke a motor. Mm -hmm. Week number two, modified, broke another motor. Had to sit out for several weeks until this past Friday night, and Billy Doc Niles, Darren Salo was the man to be. It's about time somebody knew one in the modifieds, but their numbers are once again are starting to get bigger, and uh, finally, you know, somebody that isn't named Paul Brown wins a feature in the modifieds. He go by, goes by the name of the Flying Finland there, Darren Salo, you see right here, is going to get the win. Now, the battle behind him, Paul Brown has won twice this year. Denny Schott broke his streak two weeks ago, so Schott has a win. Third ever driver to get a modified win right here, and uh, it was nice because as these two are battling back and forth, Bill, you probably seen your, your mirrors in a late model in the past, you're battling with somebody else for position when the guy in front of you is like, oh, okay, you guys can play. I'm just going to take off. That's uh, that's like the most beautiful sight in the world when you, you had somebody uh, on your backside and somebody gets alongside of them. All of a sudden, that distance grows. It's happened more than once. Uh, yet, no matter where you go, big track, little track, that side-by-side -side action just lets that guy in front of you get away. In the Hornet division, Alex Root found himself out to a quick 10-car lead. Thought Sparta as Alex Root also runs lacrosse. Was just going to walk away from this one. Gone in a blink of an eye. Here comes Aaron Hendricks, makes his way through the field. Last two we're going to show you right here. Well, there isn't really any Eric Hendricks, and here's the rest of the field. He then got a 10-car length lead over the entire field. Hendricks goes on for his first win. That was impressive. I mean, you, you, if you've seen the video, and go find. if you haven't seen it, go find it. Very impressive that he came out of nowhere, ran, ran, was it Leaps who got up front there? And just, oh, oh rude, 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 and, and then just left him in the dust. So, uh, nice job. So, uh, before we let you go to this segment, uh, Speedy Lemons, I think everybody in the state of Wisconsin, Minnesota, um, Illinois knows who that guy is. He's been flagging and been an official with many different series uh, over about 30 or 40 years. He's battling stage four cancer, and I work up on the tower with his uh, daughter, and I see his wife quite a bit, and we had quite the tribute before the feature started at Toma on Friday night. We wanted to share this video with you. Uh, Speedy didn't know this was going to be going on tonight, and I really give him a lot of credit. He's going through chemo, but he's not going to stop flagging out here. So this is his family, whether they're driving, whether they're in the grandstands, and most everybody that has something to do with Toma Racing and FanWise has signed this poster telling him to get well. We're standing behind him, and we love you, Speedy Lemons. How about that, folks? It's been a tough road the past three months for Speedy and his wife and his daughter, and was just up talking with Speedy a minute ago. His first round of chemo was Monday. He's going to start getting knee deep in the chemotherapy. And he's going to need a lot of your thoughts and prayers and encouragement to go through what a lot of us will probably never face, and that is stage four cancer. How about it for our longtime flagman, Speedy Lemons? You know, Dan, that, that was pretty cool. Uh, I can remember when I raced at the Dells for so many years, Speedy working the pits. Uh, stage four is a heck of a thing to go through, man. I, I hope everything turns out right. Best, uh, you know, best of luck to you, Speedy, and our thoughts and prayers are with you that uh, that you beat this. When we come back, we're going to talk sportsman drivers from the Lacrosse Fairgrounds Speedway. Today's program brought to you by Big Board Barbecue, Kerry Heating and Air Conditioning, D and D Diner in Sparta. Paul was looking at the menu. <laughs> Paul, yeah, Paul's going to beat you on another burger. <laughs> Epic Media and Bottle, Back Forty Wraps, and FansArena.com. We're coming back right after this. You don't have to fly to Kansas City to get great barbecue. Four years in a row and counting. Hi, this is Jerry Beyer at Big Boar Barbecue. Once again, La Crosse County has voted us the best barbecue and best caterer in La Crosse County. Making great ribs and great barbecue has always been my passion, and it means a great deal to me that you love what we do. If you haven't tried our ribs, pulled pork, brisket, or smoked chicken, try it and you'll agree. Big Boar Barbecue, a delicious mouthful. Yeah! American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is built to a higher standard so you can focus on the problems in your life that actually matter. Hey, Dave. Like giving Jeff his ladder back before he takes it back. Or where to put the food when you both get the groceries. Or the doggy door that just became a raccoony door. Whatever you're worrying about, it won't be this. 
American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning, built to a higher standard. Call today for your free estimate on a new American Standard system or schedule online at carryheating.com. At the D&D Diner, you can expect hometown meals, hometown service, and hometown prices. Hi, this is Dale with the D&D Diner in Sparta. Your new home for great food, cold beer, and fine wines. Whether it's a big breakfast, a tasty lunch, or traditional dinner, you'll find it on our menu. Whether it's Friday night fish dinners, Saturday night prime rib, or our many daily specials, your place for great food at fantastic prices is the D&D Diner in Sparta. Fans, Seven Rivers Racing, KQEG TV, along with Billy Doc Niles and Radio Man Dan Dyker, our guest in the program. Uh, always a joy to have on. It's kind of funny because it didn't dawn on me the similarities between the Silver Slingshot Jeff Thompson and Billy Doc Niles. You've been racing for how long at the Speedway? Uh, since 2010. So Billy's been out since 2010. I know this because. 2014. Well, where did you park well, the when first... Niles was done? Because he has. Niles parking spot the Speedway now. When Niles was still there, we parked uh, kind of over by where Jimmy Summerfield parks and stuff for a year. And then Bill retired, so me, Justin, and Billy moved over there, and we've been there ever since. Okay, because he's the first guy now to see down in the corner. What is going every on? Every single weekend. <laughs> what? Paul Riker. Uh -oh. Oh. If, if Jeff Thompson's oh. on the program, <laughs> we have to have the specialty of Thompson <laughs> Racing. Oh, restaurante style. Oh, they, restaurant style. Even fancy ones. What is that? Paul Reichert representing the Thompson Racing Clan, and we had to have croutons. You Everybody gotta. knows what the croutons gotta. are for. It's, it's an inside joke, folks. Now we just need some big buddies to wash them down with. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still looking for a big buddy junior. Looking at the uh, race season so far, man, usually about this time, you've got like 280 points. You only have 40 because we were rained out three times. Yeah, it's never good. It's been a rough summer. I mean, um, as far as weather, it hasn't been very good. Hopefully we can get that turned around. I want to race. You, uh, last time I talked to you was in Victory Lane after uh, a, a great night for you. Uh, the, first of all, the family on Friday goes through and everybody does a sweep at the go-kart track. A lot of pressure on you to follow through. You won the heat race, and then a little bit of luck in the feature, and it doesn't hurt to have a little bit of luck. No, it was crazy. I mean, uh, for a while there, we were just riding around in third, and like, well, Gilster and Weber got this. I'll settle for third, and next thing I know, yellow's out. Because Gilster spins, and then I'm like, all right, and then go to the cone. Me and Weber restart one, two, and he checks out. I'm like, all right, I guess I'll just watch my best friend win a feature this year and settle for second. But what was it, three to go, he blows the motor, and we're sitting in the hot seat. You know, the, I had one of my questions, I thought, you had that really cool-looking new white suit. Did you get any oil on it from the engine? That was that was. That would have been that would have sucked just to get that new suit dirty from an oil blow. Yeah, no, it's pretty clean. Uh, my wife washed it because it was pretty hot that night, so it was stinking up the house a little bit. She wasn't too <laughs> fond of it, so I told him not to wash it. Just bring it back out exactly how it is. And now we find out that he and Jesse Poxick have the same identical race. Oh yeah, I saw Poxick wearing we're in his the other night out there at the speedway. Yeah, hats off to Jesse for hooking me up with a great deal on a race suit. Uh, you need anything? Race suit, helmets. Get a hold of him, he can hook you up. He's got pretty great sponsor that allows him to get some money off that, so why not help another racer out when I was in need for a new suit anyway? So And then last out. week, last week you had a new helmet show up in the mail. Yeah, I had a new helmet. Uh, should have a little speed behind it. I got it from Casey Johnson. It didn't fit him, so hopefully we pick up another tenth. He obviously doesn't know the proper way to talk about the number five, Bill. Um, it is the ultra-fast Casey Johnson. It's definitely ultra fast. Everybody knows that. Casey, <laughs> Casey watches the program and he listens to the radio show and he's corrected us many times this year. Talk about the competition in, in the 2018 sportsman class because you got, uh, obviously you got Bachman and Weber, there's you and there's uh, um, Adam. Uh, just top four guys right now could, you know, could easily walk away with this championship. Yeah, it's a great class, tough competitors. I mean, uh, we did a lot of homework over the winter, pretty much cut that car all apart. Uh, Chris Weber did all the updates to it, found some speed. But when you're running with guys like him, Bachman, uh, Adam when he shows up, um, Sam, your nephew, um, it's hard to win a race, and to win two of them in one night, it's pretty special, and it's just a great group of guys to race with. 
You know, one thing I noticed on the point standings here, I think this it, it's really odd to see this. It's it's fantastic to see. Wins this year, Chris Weber, Jeff Thompson, Adam Oxborough. No wins by Steve Bachman, Dan Gilster, Mandy Eckelberg, Tom Lethe, Justin Burke. People that have been there for years on end, but you've got relative Jeff Thompson. He, you're not used to being up in that slot right there. Chris Weber hasn't raced here in forever, and Adam Oxborough, I think that's what only his second win at the Speedway. Well, I think the points, yeah. the points leader right now is Rain. They have three. Yeah, I know. This is getting pretty pathetic that we're going to crown Rain as the uh, how, sportsman champion. How frustrating is that? I mean, I, I can remember when I used to get frustrated over it. How frustrating is it for you and the rest of the guys in the pits? Oh, man, it gets old real in a hurry. I mean, luckily, since last time we raced, it came off a feature win, so we haven't really had to do much to the car for when we do show up at the track. Oh, yeah, true. For practice, I mean, the car's been pretty good. I mean, minor things here and there. But for being three weeks in and for me, Oxborough, and Weber to have a feature win, it's pretty cool. We're pretty close buddies. Got the whole mafia thing going on. Yeah, that whole, so we're three that for whole, three. That whole turn four has got all the feature wins. Hey, right that's now. all right. Hopefully we can keep them over by us. <laughs> you know, uh, this weekend, talking hot, I mean, this is probably more than the hottest we've had so far. When it comes to setups of your car, do you like a hot, sticky, uh, slippery track, or do you like one that's that's pretty much cold where you can stick and stay to it? Yeah, I, I prefer the cold. I mean, cold weather breeds fast race cars, and everybody's a fan of that. Well, what was his problem then? I don't, why are you asking me? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you have a win. Uh, and you I have do. a fast race car. And he, okay, anyways. <laughs> no, I don't know. I, don't, I just don't like the heat anyway, so... It, it's worse. I mean, you think it's uh, 100 degrees outside, it's 140 in the car, and, and just got to stay hydrated. Because I have a picture that I took a long time ago. I'm walking through the pits where you park now. Why? And Billy's got his race suit down to his <laughs> ankle, sitting on a five-gallon bucket with a fan in front of him, and I swore that it looked like the inside of a porta potty. It really, really did. And I thought, man, his face is beat red. And I walked up and I said, does it really get that hot in those cars? Yeah. And you're like, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's odd. I'm sure you do the same thing whenever I raced it, especially on a hot day. There was at least a case of water and a half a case of, like, uh, I think we had Gatorade in there. So I'm sure you do the same thing. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Keep stocked up on the Gatorade and water. I mean, you got to stay hydrated. Otherwise, it really can get to you. We, we only got about a minute left in the segment. I see you brought the list here. What do we have for sponsors this the year? Uh, I couldn't do obviously without the help of my wife um, my dad he's been there since day one Chris Weber Henry Vian uh, as far as sponsors go we got Burger Plumbing MBM Logistics Semis Express Dynamic Recycling uh, Smiley's Repair uh, Weber Speed Shop Jim's Paint Shop Epic Media Terrence Fillmore Racing Products b, b Racing Brothers j &L Collectibles the Glass Cover North Star Custom uh, what else we got? A and B Seed and Consulting, DJ Dan Diker, and Jeff Burrows Race Engines. Do you realize he does not have a single food or bar sponsor in his car? Only you would notice that. That's that's wild. And the other thing, but I he noticed, has croutons. The other thing I noticed: there is a fantastic recipe for French onion soup in the back of this that I will be taking home because I love me a crock of French onion. I tell you what, I'll take this, and uh, maybe when it gets a little towards Oktoberfest, I can put this in the hauler, and you guys can come down and have some food. There we go. Nice. And maybe watch for something going on at Oktoberfest this year. We'll release that uh, one of these other days. Jeff, appreciate you coming in, man. Hey, you thanks. It's always a pleasure. Kind of took me under thanks your wing for years ago. I uh, love you and your entire family, whether they're go kart racing or whether they're getting it done in the big track. Uh, you are a commodity to the sportsman to the sportsman class. I know a lot of people I like watching the commodity race. Thanks, appreciate it. It means a lot. And hard to believe that I'm one of the old guys already in the class. <laughs> <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> Rookie of the year, was it 2013? Yeah, 2013. It's been a while ago. Uh, Five years. Seasoned yeah. veteran now. The legacy will continue after I give it up with my son coming up through racing, so Just I'm excited like the, for that. Just like the seasoned croutons, you're a seasoned veteran. It, it's a fitting. It's fitting. Billy Doc Niles, Jeff Thompson, I'm Dan Dyker. We're going to come back, talk Super Late Model Racing. That's coming up next on Seven Members Racing. You don't have to fly to Kansas City to get great barbecue. Big Boar Barbecue is up and running on the north side of La Crosse. Hi, this is Jerry Beyer at Big Boar Barbecue. Yes, the food truck is open at George and Gillette Street to make it easier for you north siders to find out why La Crosse County has voted us four years in a row as the best barbecue and best caterer in La Crosse County. Big Boar Barbecue, Highway 16 West Salem, and now open at George and Gillette Street. A delicious mouthful. 
American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning is built to a higher standard, so you can focus on the problems in your life that actually matter. Hey, Dave. Like giving Jeff his ladder back before he takes it back. Or where to put the food when you both get the groceries. Or the doggy door that just became a raccoon door. Whatever you're worrying about, it won't be this. American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning, built to a higher standard. Call today for your free estimate on a new American Standard system or schedule online at carryheating.com. At the D&D Diner, you can expect hometown meals, hometown service, and hometown prices. Hi, this is Dale with the D&D Diner in Sparta. Your new home for great food, cold beer, and fine wines. Whether it's a big breakfast, a tasty lunch, or traditional dinner, you'll find it on our menu. Whether it's Friday night fish dinners, Saturday night prime rib, or our many daily specials, your place for great food at fantastic prices is the D&D Diner in Sparta. The Seven Wars Racing KQEG TV, along with Billy Doc Niles, Paul Reichert, Jeff Thompson still hanging out as we're dishing off the croutons. Had a chance to talk with Colin Ruffner this week, picked up his first ever Super Late Model win in the Tundra Series. Here's Colin. Going to have a gentleman pop on the program now that I uh, just briefly got to say hi to a couple of weeks ago up in Marshfield. He came back to Marshfield last weekend for the annual Bav Ashenbrenner Memorial, picked up his first ever Tundra win. Round two at Marshfield. That is the number 87 of Mr. Colin Reffner. Colin, how are you, friend? Good. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. appreciate I, it a lot. Usually, every time I catch you at Marshfield, you come on the program at least once a year. So we call you a friend of the program, and we greatly appreciate that. Yeah, absolutely. So you looked a little bit excited hopping out of your super late model after getting your first Tundra win. Am I wrong? Yeah, no, not at all. Yeah, I mean, we were... We were de I was definitely excited. I mean, the whole team was excited. I mean, it's, it's been quite a while since I won a feature, so it was definitely good to get a monkey off our back. And no, we we really needed to. We've we've heard the audio, and we're going to play that here in a little bit. Uh, I think the whole team sounded pretty excited for you. Oh, definitely. Yeah, it was it was definitely a big big relief and a you know big accomplishment for all of us. So it was yeah, it was a great day. Now I don't want to bring up bad timings for you, but when was your last feature race win? Well, my last feature race win, um, I guess my well, my first one was back in 2011 um, at the Futures race at Oktoberfest. Yeah, October I remember that. Yep, yeah. yep. remember that. Yeah, I also I also won a segment the next day, and then um, if you're counting that as, uh, as a feature win too, I think I had in 2015. I won the third segment of the Trickle 99 um, over there in Oct at Lacrosse as well. So those have been kind of my last wins, really. So, well, you can't say they're bad wins because oh, yeah. you, because you're winning an Oktoberfest, which nobody – that's a hard thing to do. Yeah, I mean, it's usually the best of the best over there from all around. So, yeah, it's always, it's always a great feeling to do well over there. Colin Raptor joining us on the race report on this Saturday afternoon, coming off his first Tundra ever win at the Bev Afri Ashen Brenner Memorial. You know, that was a loaded field. You want to talk about the, a lot of talent coming out, man. You had a lot of good cars to go against at Marshfield. Yeah, I mean, there really, there really was. I mean, Casey Johnson, um, you know, he was in the field. You know, he had, you know, troubles earlier on. But, uh, you know, Justin Mondike, John Beal, um, you know, um, Justin Mondike ended up, you know, getting spun out a little bit earlier on in the race, but he ended up coming back to finish third. Um, Carson Quaffle ended up finishing second in the 91. I mean, yeah, so there, I mean, there was a lot of good guys, um, you know, all around, all the way from, you know, front to tail in the, in the Thunder field, like always. And, Colin, I, I've been wondering, uh, with the last name of Refner here, uh, following your granddad's footsteps, uh, following in Brian's footsteps, uh, is there much uh, pressure, I guess, uh, to be a success uh, just like they were? Or how, how uh, special is it to have the Refner name uh, be a part of this, the Refner legacy, I guess? Yeah, I mean, I guess I guess I don't, you know, I try and I don't really feel pressure, so to say. But, um, you know, I of course I like, you know, I look at what my uncle has, has done, my dad and my grandfather have all done, and you know, I just, you know, I'd like to, you know, try and match that, you know, for my own, you know, self, my own accomplishments and everything like that. And you know, I guess you know, really being a part of, you know, the Refter family. Really, I always the thing that's always been the coolest thing for me is. Um, you know, hearing stories from, 
you know, older race fans that have, they got to watch my grandfather, my uncle, my dad race. Really, that's, uh, you know, for having the referee last name, those, those, that's really have been, has been the coolest, you know, part of my life is, you know, just hearing those stories from way back when. But that, that I really enjoy well, hearing. We've got a lot of stories. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one of the cool things I always like to do, and, and he's a big time friend of the program as well, he comes on pretty much whenever we want him to. Is uh, is Tom Ruffner, and I love walking by your hauler, and pretty much every single time, he and the wife are right in the back of the hauler, collecting some shade, but there to support you. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, my God, I mean, I could probably count on one hand the amount of races uh, that my grandpa's missed in recent years, and yeah, my grandma's always there, and you know, my uncle and my aunt, and yeah, I mean, it's a, I mean, it's a pretty stacked Ruffner pit stall when you when you come to any one of my races. You know, speaking of speaking of legacies, uh, that that Quaffle kid created quite a buzz in the pits there this weekend. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that was that was a lot of talk. I mean, he, you know, definitely. Uh, you know, you know, being who his dad is, you know, obviously he comes from a you know a good racing family. So that you know that was pretty cool to you know have uh, Travis in the pit area, and he came up and ingr- congratulated me. So that that was pretty cool to shake his hand after you know after getting a win too. So that, that was really neat. So how does this catapult Colin Ruffner racing uh, for the rest of 2018? I know a lot of people have not really been able to race much. Here at Lacrosse, we've been rained out three times. Toma, we've been rained out three times. So a lot of good drivers are not getting a chance to, to really get their programs uh, underway this year. What is in store for you the rest of the year? Yeah, the rest of the year, um, I'm going to be doing the, in the Tundra Series. I'm not going to be able to make the Jefferson race with the Tundra Series, Adam Peshik's and I are teamed up for that, so he's going to be covering that race, which is really cool. Um, and then I'm also going to be doing the four Wisconsin Challenge Series races, and then, of course, Oktoberfest at the end of the year, like always. So uh, that's kind of what my schedule looks like. So a lot of, a lot of all kind of, you know, bigger special races. So it'll be, it'll be pretty exciting rest of the season. Has the thought of uh, dabbling in the Arca Midwest Tour uh, uh, enticed you a little bit, like possibly running for Rookie of the Year next year? Um, you know, it's always been a thing that I've, you know, running with the Arkham Meadows Tour has always been something that I've wanted to do. Um, just kind of, you know, funding wise, it just hasn't, hasn't set in my schedule. I always, you know, I always try and get to a couple of the races, you know, during the season, uh, this year, it's not looking like it's really going to fit in possibly maybe run the big Sunday show over October fest with those guys. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's never really you know seemed to you know work out with my with my racing schedule. Definitely something you know that's you know definitely high up on my list. You know, wanting to run more of those races uh, with you know, especially with that level of competition that follows suit with all those races. So it's definitely up on my uh, want to do list. But just hasn't I haven't made it work you know for the last few years here. Okay, we only got about a minute and a half here, Colin. Uh, who's helping you out sponsor wise this year? Yeah, definitely. I've got a lot of a lot of returning sponsors this year. Um, uh, D and D amusement games, best excavating and trucking, uh, next home partners, Wagner automotive research, AR bodies, made a custom apparel, fast signs, uh, midway machine and equipment and uh, forte design. So I got a lot of good people that have you know been helping me out for the last handful of years in my race career. He's a gentleman that we could spend a half an hour talking to, and I try to get him on at least once or twice during the uh, during the year. You know, Colin, this year uh, Tom comes on every single Oktoberfest uh, when we do our live show from the media center at Lacrosse Speedway. You're, you're uh, welcome to join him. I was going to say this year, if we can time it the right way, where the super late models aren't practicing on Saturday, we'd love to have you and Tom side by side with Mars, Mar- Marv Marzovka on the program. Yeah, that would that would be a blast. I'd absolutely love to be up for that. Absolutely. All right, Paul's my scheduler. Paul, write that one down. We're going to make damn sure that we can get him over okay. and up for a <laughs> ten-minute segment. He's coming off his first ever Tundra win at the Bev Ashenburner Memorial at uh, Marshfield. That was round number two. Number eighty-seven is Colin Raffner. Colin, it's always a treat to have on the program. We greatly appreciate your time, and hey, good luck for the rest of the summer. Hey, thanks, guys. I appreciate you uh, wanting me on. It, it was an honor. Congratulations, to Colin Raffner, on his first ever touring series super late model win. We got to get out of here before we do. We got to thank our sponsors, Carrie Heating and Air Conditioning, D&D Diner in Sparta, Epic Media and Vinyl, Beck 40 Vin- uh, Wraps, FansArena.com, and of course our friends at Big Boar Barbecue. Until next week, this has been Seven Rivers Racing on KQEG TV. You've been watching Seven Rivers Racing on KQEG TV with Dan the Voice Diker, Billy Doc Niles, and Paul the Statman Riker.
Brought to you by Big Boar Barbecue, Highway 16 West Salem, in La Crosse on 3rd Street downtown and George and Gillette Street. Big Boar Barbecue, now that's a mouthful. By Cary Heating and Air Conditioning, your residential specialist, serving the La Crosse area since 1929. Cary Heating and Air Conditioning. And by the D&D Diner, good food, fine wine, on Theater Road in Sparta, next to the BP Drug Stop. Thanks for watching Seven Rivers Racing on KQEG TV. You don't have to fly to Kansas City to get great barbecue. Four years in a row and counting. Hi, this is Jerry Beyer at Big Boar Barbecue. Once again, La Crosse County has voted us the best barbecue and best caterer in La Crosse County. Making great ribs and great barbecue has always been my passion, and it means a great deal to me that you love what we do. If you haven't tried our ribs, pulled pork, brisket, or smoked chicken, try it and you'll agree. Big Boar Barbecue, a delicious mouthful. Yeah!